with Mason, and this is Mason Zero ASMR. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about Commander. I have another Commander deck to show you guys, and this one is Alicia, who smiles at death. Um, Alicia, who smiles at death, is two and a red for a 3-2 legendary creature, human warrior. She has first strike. Whenever Alicia, who smiles at death, attacks, you may pay two hybrid, white or black. If you do, return target creature card with power two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, tapped and attacking. Obviously, Alicia has a nice build-around mechanic in, so a deck around here wants you to put things into the graveyard, wants a lot of your creatures to have power 2 or less. Now that doesn't mean that you're going to be playing with a bunch of 2 2s and 2 3s and stuff. It means you're going to be playing some things with big butts and some things that have uh, some really good abilities but low stats and cost a lot. So we're going to start with the creatures first and I guess I'll start off by saying this isn't necessarily my favorite commander deck of mine. I actually don't think it's very good. I haven't tested it much, but it doesn't seem to be as good as my other ones. But my other ones are a bit more refined in the mana base and in all the cards. This one hasn't been around for as long. So our first creature is Palisade Giant. Palisade Giant is 6 mana for a 2-7 giant soldier. All damage that would be dealt to you or another permanent you control is dealt to Palisade Giant instead. So this is nice because you can bring it back with Alicia and it helps protect her as well as your life total. Priest of the Blood Rite, 5 mana for a 2-2 human cleric. When Priest of the Blood Rite enters the battlefield, put a 5-5 Black Deem Creature token the flying onto the battlefield. At the beginning of your upkeep, you lose 2 life. Obviously, the ideal is to get rid of this guy once you get the demon, but you can keep bringing him back if he dies and keep getting a demon. Stromgald Spy. 3 and a black for a 2-4 Spy. If Stromgald Spy attacks and is not blocked, you may choose to have it deal no damage to Defending Player this turn. If you do so, Defending Player must play with his or her hand face up on the table until Stromgald leaves play. So kind of an interesting card. It lets you uh, get in, and if it's not blocked, you can have your opponent uh, revealing their hand indefinitely. This next card doesn't fall under Alicia's rules of bringing back, but is a way to trade in some of your less good stuff for some better stuff, including tokens. It's Champion of Stray Souls, 6 mana for a 4-4 four, four Skeleton Warrior. Pay 5, tap it, and sacrifice X other creatures. Return X target creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. We're supposed to get a lot of things into the graveyard, and of course these ones that we sacrifice to the champion can be brought back with Alicia. You can also pay 7 mana to put champion as Trey Souls on top of your library from your graveyard. King Makar, the Gold Cursed, is 4 mana for a 2-3 legendary creature human with Inspired. Whenever he becomes untapped, you may exile a target creature. If you do, put a colorless artifact token named Gold onto the battlefield. It has sacrificed this artifact at one mana of any color to your mana pool. So King Makar is a solid card to help you get some mana fixing as well as destroying creatures. Exiling them, I should say. Mardu Horde Chief. 3 mana for a 2-3 human warrior with a raid. When it enters the battlefield, if you attacked with a creature this turn, you get a 1-1 one, one white warrior token. And 
since that will trigger when Alicia attacks. That trigger will happen when it comes onto the battlefield from Alicia, because she will have attacked. Beetleback Chief is four mana for a 2 2 goblin warrior. When it enters the battlefield, put two 1 1 red goblin creature tokens on the battlefield. Solid way to get some more tokens. Mardu, Heart Piercer, 4 mana for a 2 3 human archer with raid. When it enters the battlefield, if you attacked with a creature this turn, Mardu Heart Piercer deals 2 damage to target creature or player. Timuret the Murder King. 2 mana for a 2-2 two, two legendary creature, zombie warrior. Pay 1 and a red and sacrifice another creature. Timuret deals 2 damage to target player. One in a black and sacrifice a creature. Return Timurit from your graveyard to your hand. Palace Jailer. Four mana for a 2-2 human soldier. When it enters the battlefield, you become the monarch. So we get a little bit of extra card draw from that. You also exile target creature and opponent controls until an opponent becomes the monarch. Tree of Perdition is 4 mana for a 0 13 plant with Defender. You can tap it to exchange target opponent's life total with Tree of Perdition's toughness. So, bringing them down to 13 in a, when you have 40 life to start with is significant. <laughs> Dragon Scale General, 4 mana for a 2 3 human warrior. At the beginning of your end step, bolster X, where X is the number of tapped creatures you control. So he favors the aggressive strategy that Alicia offers. Gravedigger, 4 mana for a 2 2 zombie. When Gravedigger comes into play, you may return to a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Just solid recursion. Night Howler, 3 for a 0-0 zero, zero enchantment creature, or as Bestow for 4. Night Howler and enchanted creature each get plus X plus X, where X is the number of creature cards in all graveyards. And we should have a lot in our graveyard. Ponyback Brigade is 5 mana for a 2-2. Two, two. You can also morph it for 5. Six mana for a doo doo, sorry. When it enters the battlefield or is turned face up, put three 1 1 red goblin creature tokens onto the battlefield. So as you can see, we have a decent amount of token creators as well, at least goblin tokens. Flame Wake Phoenix, three mana for a 2 2 Phoenix with flying and haste. It attacks each turn if able, and it has ferocious. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control a creature with power 4 or greater, you may pay red. If you do, return Flame Wake Phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield. We don't have that many big creatures, but it's also a creature can, we can return anyways. So it has double recursion, and it's flying. Speaking of flying, we also have a Blazing Spectre. 4 mana for a 2-2 two, two with flying in haste. Whenever Blazing Spectre deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card. <clears throat> Graveblade Marauder is 3 mana for a 1-4 human warrior with Death Touch. Whenever Graveblade Marauder deals combat damage to a player, that player loses life equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. As mentioned before, that should be a lot. We have some ways of dumping stuff into our graveyard for Alicia to bring back. Reckless Bushwhacker is 3 mana for a 2-1 Goblin Warrior ally. It has Surge for 2 and Haste. When it enters
enters the battlefield if its surge cost was paid. Other creatures you control get plus one plus zero oh, in haste until end of turn. Ogre Battle Driver also does not apply with Alicia, but Ogre Battle Driver is four mana for a three three Ogre Warrior. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, that creature gets plus two plus O oh, and gains haste until end of turn. Crater Elemental. It's three mana for a zero six. Pay a red, tap it, and sacrifice it. Crater Elemental deals four damage to target creature. Has formidable. For three mana, Crater Elemental has base power eight and end of turn. Activate this ability only if creatures you control have total power eight or greater. I like this one because it's something you can bring back with Alicia that is very easily an eight six. So can't complain about that, huh? <clears throat> Keepsake Gorgon is five mana for a two five Gorgon with Death Touch. It has uh, Monstrosity one for seven mana. When it becomes monstrous, destroy target non-Gorgon creature and opponent controls. Ankle Shanker is 5 mana for a 2-2 Goblin Berserker with haste. Whenever it attacks, creatures you control gain first strike and death touch until end of turn. Arashian Foremost, 3 mana for a 2-2 Human Warrior with Double Strike. Whenever Arashian Foremost enters the battlefield or attacks, another target warrior creature you control gains Double Strike until end of turn. We do have quite a few warriors, and Alicia herself is a warrior, so plenty of targets for the Foremost. And it's a foil. Battle Brawler is 2 mana for a 2-2 Orc Warrior. As long as you control a red or white permanent, Battle Brawler gets plus 1 plus 0 oh, and has first strike. Mardu Woe Reaper, 1 mana for a 2-1 Human Warrior. Whenever Mardu Woe Reaper or another warrior enters the battlefield under your control, you may exile target creature card from a graveyard. If you do, you gain one life. Krenzo, have a grazer. Two mana for a 2 2. Legendary creature, Goblin Rogue. Whenever a creature you control deals damage to a player, choose one. Go target creature that player controls, or exile the top card of that player's library. Until end of turn, you may cast that card, and you may spend mana as though it were any color to cast it. Grenzo is a solid card. Flame Rush Rider. 5 mana for a 3-3 three, three human warrior. Whenever it attacks, put a token onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. That's a copy of another target attacking creature. Exile the token at end of combat. It also has dash for 4. Custody Soul Caller is 3 mana for a 1-2 with melee. Whenever Custody Soul Caller attacks, return target creature card with converted mana cost X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, where X is the number of players you attacked with a creature this combat. Mentor of the Meek works nicely with Alicia as well. Mentor of the Meek is 3 mana for a 2-2 human soldier. Whenever another creature with power 2 or less enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay 1 
if you do draw a card. We are in white red uh, mostly, so we need as much card draw as we can get. Goblin War Chief is three mana for a 2 2 Goblin Warrior. Goblin spells you cast cost one less to cast. Goblin creatures you control have haste. We do have a fair amount of goblins. Our last creature is Pontiff of Blight. It's six mana for a 2 7. Zombie Cleric with Extort. Other creatures you control have Extort. Now on to the non-creature spells, starting with Instance. Phalanx Formation is three mana for an instant. With Strive, it costs two more to cast for each target beyond the first. Any number of target creatures each gain double strike until end of turn. Aurelia's Fury, X and a red and a white for an instant. Aurelia's Fury deals X damage to fight it as you choose among any number of target creatures or players. Tap each creature dealt damage this way. Players dealt damage this way can't cast non-creature spells this turn. Death Denied, X and two black for an arcane instant. Return X target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. In case we get some things into our graveyard that Alicia just can't get out fast enough. But we have mana to spare. We can get them back. Crackling Doom. Three mana for an instant. Crackling Doom deals two damage to each opponent. Each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power among creatures he or she controls. Street Spasm is X and a red. It deals X damage to target creature without flying you don't control. You can overload it for 2X and 2 red so that it hits each creature without flying you don't control. Now onto the sorceries. We have End Hostilities. 5 mana. Destroy all creatures and all permanents attached to creatures. Cathartic Reunion, 2 mana, as an additional cost to cast Cathartic Reunion, draw or discard 2 cards, then draw 3 cards. Song of Blood, 2 mana, put the top 4 cards of your library into your graveyard. For each creature card put into your graveyard in this way, all creatures that attack this turn get plus 1 plus 0 oh until end of turn. Very nice random card from Visions, I think. Fits very nicely. Flame Wave. 3 and 4 red. Flame Wave deals 4 damage to target creature, and each creature he or she controls. So, sort of another board wipe. Sometimes. Liliana's Indignation. X and a black. Put the top X cards of your library into your graveyard. Target player loses two life for each creature card put into your graveyard this way. Tempt with Immortality. Five mana with Tempting Offer. Return a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. Each opponent may return a creature card from his or her graveyard to the battlefield. For each player who does, return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. A tormenting Voice. Two mana, as an additional cost to cast Tormenting Voice, discard a card, draw two cards. Mizium Mortars, 2 mana, deals 4 damage to target creature you don't control. You can overload it for 6 to hit every creature you don't control for 4 damage. Tragic Arrogance, 5 mana, for each player you choose from among the permanents that player controls. An artifact, a creature, an enchantment, and a planeswalker. Then each player 
sacrifices all other non-land permanents he or she controls. Languish. Four mana. All creatures get minus four, minus four until end of turn. Mob rule. Six mana. Choose one. Gain control of all creatures with power four or greater until end of turn. Untap them. They gain haste. Gain control of all creatures with power three or less until end of turn. Untap them. They gain haste. Next we have our enchantments. Mardu Ascendancy. Three mana. Whenever a non-token creature you control attacks. Put a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. Sacrifice Mardu Ascendancy. Creatures you control get plus 0, plus 3 until end of turn. Phyrexian Arena. 3 mana. At the beginning of your upkeep, you draw a card and you lose 1 life. Marshall's Anthem, 4 mana, with multi-kicker for 2. Creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1. When Marshall's Anthem enters the battlefield, return up to X target creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield, where X is the number of times Marshall's Anthem was kicked. Nahiri's Machinations, 2 mana. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature you control gains indestructible until end of turn. Pay two, Nahiri's Machinations deals one damage to the target blocking creature. Dictate of Heliod, five mana for an enchantment with flash. Creatures you control get plus two, plus two. Berserker's Onslaught, 5 mana, attacking creatures you control, have double strike. So those are the enchantments, and now on to uh, our Planeswalkers. We have two Planeswalkers in this deck. We have Doretti, Ingenious Iconoclast, 3 mana for a 3 loyalty Planeswalker. Doretti, plus 1. Put a 1 1 colorless construct artifact creature token with defender onto the battlefield. Minus 1. You may sacrifice an artifact. If you do, destroy target artifact or creature. Minus 6. Choose target artifact card in a graveyard or artifact on the battlefield. Put three tokens that are copies of it onto the battlefield. Not a lot of great targets for Doretti. He's basically a removal spell. <laughs> essentially, or a potentially repeatable one. A much better Planeswalker for the deck is Soren Solemn Visitor. Four mana for a four loyalty Planeswalker, Soren. Plus one, until your next turn, creatures you control get plus one, plus O, oh, and lifelink. Minus two, put a two, two black vampire creature token with flying onto the battlefield. Minus six, you get an emblem with at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep that player sacrifices a creature. Then we have artifacts. We have two equipment and the rest are mana rocks. First we have Butcher's Cleaver. Three mana. Equipped creature gets plus three plus O. Oh. If it's a human, it has lifelink and it's equipped for three. Hero's Blade, 2 mana, equipped creature gets plus 3 plus 2. Whenever a legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach Hero's Blade to it, equipped for 4. And then we have Racto Signet, Moro Signet, and Orzov Signet for some mana fixing. And then, apparently just a Rakdos glue stone, not the other ones. Maybe I just don't have any. And then a Marju banner taps for each of the three colors. Or you can 
sacrifice it and draw a card. And then we have a Boros and Rakdos key rune, which that for red and white and black and red, uh, respectively. Boros key rune can turn into a 1-1 soldier to, uh, creature with double strike. The Rakdos key rune can be a 3-1 devil with first strike until end of turn. onto our lands. Our mana base isn't the best. Uh, most of my good lands are in my other decks, so I don't care about this deck as much. So I apologize for not having a great mana base compared to some of my other decks. Uh, we have Rocky Tar Pit. Enters the battlefield tapped. We can tap and sacrifice it to get a swamp or mountain and put it onto the battlefield. Rakdos Guildgate for black or red, enters tapped. Blood fell caves, and taps for red or, red or black, comes in tapped. When it enters, you gain a life. Cinder barons, comes in tapped, taps for black or red. Scoured barons, taps for white or black, enters tapped, and you gain a life. Forsaken Sanctuary enters tapped and taps for white or black. Orzhov Basilica enters tapped. When it enters the battlefield, return a land you control to its owner's hand. Taps for a white and black at the same time. Temple of Silence enters the battlefield tapped and you get to scry one it taps for white or black. Orzov Guild Gate, Enders tapped, taps for white or black. Boros Garrison, Enders tapped. When it enters the battlefield, return to land you control to its owner's hand. Taps for red and white. Neil Spires, enters tapped, taps for red or white. You can pay four, and it becomes a 2-1 red and white elemental creature with double strike until end of turn. It's still a land. Windscarred Crag, enters tapped. You gain a life, and it taps for red or white. Stone Quarry, enters tapped and then taps for red or white. Mortuary Mire enters tapped. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you may put target creature card from your graveyard on top of your library. Kapira Crossroads enters tapped. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you gain two life. Taps for white. Key to encampment. Taps for red. Enters tapped. Can pay two, and it becomes a 2-1 red warrior creature with first strike until end of turn. It's still a land. Nomad outpost. Enters tapped. And taps for red, white, or black. Unknown Shores, taps for a generic, and you can pay a generic and tap it to add one mana of any color. Rick's Muddy Dungeon Palace, tap to add a generic to your mana pool. Pay uh, three mana and tap it. Each player discards a card by this ability as a sorcery. Evolving Wilds, tap it and sacrifice it, search your library for a basic land, and put it onto the battlefield tapped. Haunted Fengraf, taps for one generic, pay three and tap it and sacrifice it. Return a creature card at random from your graveyard to your hand. Then we 
we have some basic lands. We have one, two, three, four swamps. One, two, three, four mountains. And one, two, three plains. So guys, that is Alicia, who smiles at death. Uh, like I said, not my best commander deck, but it's a good start, I think. And uh, I'm sure with a little more effort and a little more money, I can make it a lot better. And I'm excited to hopefully play it sometime and have it be good. Commander is quite a fun format, and I'm looking forward to getting one or two of the Commander 2016 decks when they come out in a couple weeks. So hope you guys are excited for those too. And I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope that you sleep very well, have a relaxing day, and I will see you in the next video. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the video and of the deck. Good night.